Good day everybody and welcome to another PHP Runner tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate one example of how you could apply the Dialog API within your project. The Dialog API is only available from version 10.3 of PHP Runner and I trust it will stay in future releases as I found it to be a quite handy addition to the software. Here I have a listening page of orders. Please note that all traditional editing functionality is disabled. In other words, not able to perform edit or inline edit on these records. So let's assume someone needs to add notes to these sets of orders quickly and easily. You probably already noticed the edit link for each order in the notes column. So let's demonstrate how this works. I click the first one and the dialog opens, asking for the note you would like to add. I type something. Note that I can resize the field as it is from type text area. And when done, click on update note. It is also interesting to note that if I edit the same record again, the current note is pre-populated. So I can either change it entirely or add to it. So just before I show you how quick and easy it is to do this, a big thank you to Xlinesoft for this state-of-the-art software. Please go and visit their website, not only to get your copy, but also to upgrade to the latest version. As already mentioned, the example I'm about to show you is only applicable to version 10.3 or later of PHP Runner. Okay, let's have a quick look at the online manual of the Dialog API. I will leave a link in the description should you like to explore it for yourself. It starts by explaining what the Dialog API is, an overview of the syntax, and then it breaks down all the parameters. It explains you how you should use it, and it ends in an example. One thing I can say about the manual, it is straight to the point, tells you everything you need to know, and it is easy to understand. Not all parameters are compulsory, but I will be using all of them for demonstration purposes. Here I have a project with an order table. I only selected the list page. The same can of course be achieved if you choose all of these pages, but I only need a listing page for this demonstration. Straight to the page designer, I'm adding a custom button to the grid right before the notes field. You are free to add the button wherever you want, provided that it is in a grid. I am changing the button style to link button or link, but again this is entirely up to you as it will make no difference to the functionality. Finally, I change the label to take up the least space possible. Ok, let's code the button. I am currently on the client before event of the custom button I just added. The manual is clear, we always return false when using the dialog API. So I make it my first step. Next, let's copy the syntax. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to separate the parentheses and curly brackets into lines, having the open and close of each type grouped. We also removed the word settings as it only served as a placeholder. Next, I refer back to the manual and have a look at the parameters. The example below explains precisely how it should be used. Now that I understand, I'm going to copy them all. I also notice that every parameter is of type string except for fields which is an array. From the manual I can see that the array is enclosed with square brackets and then has curly brackets within. 
also want to mention that the list of parameters does not have any particular order. I could have had cancel as the last parameter, but essential is to be sure not to have a comma at the last parameter. So I have to fix it like this. The comma indicates that the next parameter is following and with no comma at the end suggests that this is the last parameter in the list. I can easily leave it like this, but since there is more to do at the field parameter, I will move it back the way it was. Just like I separated the bracket types before, I'm going to do the same with the square and curly brackets here at the field parameter. So let's go back to the manual and see what we need to put in here. Each field has a name, label, type and value and they are all of data type string. The same rule regarding the commas apply. I only need one field for this example, but in case you need a second field, you can copy the field parameter, add a comma after the last curly bracket, indicating that another field is defined and paste it. I will undo this step as I only need one field. I now fill out the string values following the instructions from the manual. Ok, what we have so far is a dialog box that looks like this. The title, header, the OK button is renamed to update note, the cancel button is renamed to cancel update, now the field. The name is set to note and is what we will use to reference the value in the server event. The label appears here. The type can either be text or text area. And last, the current value of the field is empty. You will recall at the beginning of this tutorial that the field was pre-populated with the current value in the field. To do this, I use row.getFieldValue. Notes is the actual field value in my database table. And I store the value in a variable called CURNote. I now set the value to current note instead of leaving it empty. The dialog is now complete and we will move over to the server event. The only thing I will be doing here is to update the record with the new value. First, I retrieve an associated array representing the entire row using get current record. I construct a new array to be used with the database API to perform the update where ID is equal to a row ID from the data array. I also set a new value to be updated using the value returned from the dialog. More in-depth explanation with regards to the database API will follow soon in future tutorials. Finally, at the client after event, I will refresh the page after the record was updated using the following code. Ok, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you see the potential of the Dialog API and can identify a similar situation where this can be very useful. Please leave your questions, comments and remember to like and subscribe. Like always, thanks for watching. Till next time.